A famous ship, the White Star Liner, sank in the past, and pirates discovered some treasures, including ancient plates that identified the ship. Billion Dollar Wreck follows Martin Bayerly's quest to find lost treasures on the sunken RMS Republic. Many have tried to get treasures from the ship, rumored to hold up to $7 billion in riches. What treasures have been found, and where exactly is the wreck? Come along as we explore this ancient treasure found in a billion-dollar wreck, the disappearance of the world's largest treasure ship. The RMS Titanic was equipped with 16 wooden lifeboats and four collapsible boats. While this provided seats for only about half of the people on board, it was more lifeboats than the mandated regulations at the time. The ship possessed modern well in devits that could easily double or even triple her lifeboat capacity. But at this point, this didn't seem necessary. The conventional wisdom at the time was that lifeboats were meant to ferry passengers from one ship to another. They were not meant to carry everyone on board for a long period after a sinking. But what prompted this sinking? The builders and designers of the Titanic were well aware that their ship could sink, but they were confident in their design. She was equipped with watertight compartments that could contain or at least slow down flooding in an emergency. The RMS Titanic was designed to operate in the North Atlantic on the busiest shipping route in the world. Should anything ever happen, another ship would almost certainly be nearby to mount a rescue. Their confidence was not just built on years of innovation and design. It was bolstered by another White Star liner that sank just as plans for the Titanic and Olympics were coming together. A disaster in which the heroic actions of a wireless operator saved everyone on board and created a false sense of confidence in the safety of shipping at the time. The building of the RMS Republic taught shipbuilders all the wrong lessons. How did the Republic help teach all builders the wrong lessons? In what ways was this a curse rather than a blessing? First Wireless Rescue and the Palatial Liner and RMS Republic was a steam-powered ocean liner built in 1903 by Harland and Wolfe in Belfast and lost at sea in a collision in 1909 while sailing for the White Star Line. The ship was equipped with a new Marconi wireless telegraphy transmitter and issued a CQD distress call, resulting in the saving of around 1,500 lives. Known as the Millionaire Ship because of the number of wealthy Americans who traveled by her, she was described as a palatial liner and was the flagship of White Star Line's Boston service. This was the first important marine rescue made possible by radio and brought worldwide attention to this new technology. How was such wireless contact possible? And just how much danger did it help them avert? What happened to the Palachal Liner? On the morning of 23rd January 1909, en route from New York to Gibraltar, she sailed into thick fog off Nantucket. Commanded by William Inman Sealby, she carried 742 passengers and crew. Due to the thickness of the fog and poor visibility, the captain reduced speed and blew the ship's whistle as per protocol. A reply whistle was heard prompting the captain to reverse engines and turn hard to port. Unfortunately, it was too late, and out of the fog emerged the SS Florida, which collided with the Republic at a right angle midships, instantly killing two sleeping passengers. These were Eugene Lynch's liquor magnate, wife Mary, and the wealthy banker, W.J. Mooney, not in the same cabin. On the Florida, six crewmen were killed, bringing the total casualties from the collision to eight. On board this voyage were such celebrities of the time as Mrs. Sophie Curtis, wife of George Curtis, Mrs. Mary Severance, Professor John M. Coulter, General Barrington C. Ives, Mr. Samuel Couples, a well-known St. Louis millionaire, Mildred Montague, Countess Pasolini, Mrs. Bessie Davis, daughter-in-law of Senator Henry G. Davis. The engine and boiler rooms of the Republic were first to flood, causing the steamer to list dramatically. The Florida, in no danger of capsizing, came about to assist with the rescue of passengers, later joined by the cutter Gresham, responding to the historic distress call. The Florida took on the majority of passengers, which together with her complement of 900 emigrants placed considerable strain on the damaged steamer. The White Star Steamer Baltic also responded to the distress call, but was only able to locate the position of the Republic by that evening. Passengers were transferred from Florida to the Baltic, and a riot was narrowly averted when first-class passengers from the Republic took precedence boarding over the emigrants from Florida.
the Republic did not have an adequate number of lifeboats, as did the Titanic, for the quota of passengers and crew. In this case, they were lucky, and vessels in general relied on the busy shipping lane to assist in times such as this, therefore not requiring a sufficient number of lifeboats. The Titanic in 1912 brought this naive shortcoming into the public domain, precipitating a change in legislation. Despite the application of collision mats and canvas treated with sealant to stem leaks in hulls, the Republic sank on 24 January, the largest vessel to sink up until that time. All crew and passengers were safely evacuated, and only the eight mentioned above died due to the impact of the collision. Up until now, there have been numerous attempts to salvage the treasures that are aboard the Republic. But how many treasures were on the vessel? The Republic's treasure and its billion-dollar worth. A Miami, Florida treasure salvage company plans operations in 2020 to recover gold estimated today at more than $7 billion that the firm asserts was aboard the RMS Republic when it collided with another vessel on January 24, 1909, south of Nantucket Island, Massachusetts, and sank. Independent confirmation that the ship carried a fortune in gold remains elusive. Captain Martin Byerly from Lords of Fortune LLC says he pinpointed the RMS Republic in shark-infested waters in 1981, but has battled in the courts with jurisdiction over the shipwreck and its cargo ever since for the sole right to salvage the treasure. After the 2016 History Channel series Billion Dollar Wreck aired, research continued. They have since unequivocally confirmed one cargo, the U.S. Navy's 1909 payroll and operational expense shipment of $800,000 of today's value, very conservatively $200 million, according to Bayerly. And the original Russian state bank shipment has since been increased from the original $3 million in U.S. double eagle gold coins, which gave the History Channel show its title, Billion Dollar Wreck, to now $25 million. That is 45 tons of newly minted double gold eagle coins packed in six 25 160-pound wooden boxes, gross weight, today easily $7 billion. That valuation too ignores all the personal effects of her millionaire passengers, left in their staterooms, Byerl said. So just how much treasure has been recovered from the Republic? And who is it that recovered these treasures? Treasures found off the Republic. The Republic was discovered last August in some 1,700 feet, 500 meters of water, about 100 miles, 160 kilometers, southeast of Savannah. The find capped an effort that had spanned a dozen years, but when the Odyssey team began excavating the site, their success was much more immediate. The coins were in the area that they had predicted they would find them, and the first coin appeared within the first hour of excavation. Odyssey co-founder and director of operations Greg Stem told National Geographic News, I would like to think that we were that good, but there is always an element of luck in this type of endeavor. Odyssey, marine exploration, based in Tampa, Florida, is a leader in the field of deep ocean shipwreck exploration. While STEM's team was on target with its estimate of the coin's location, they encountered some pleasant surprises. The vast majority of the coins we are seeing are gold, $20 and $10 pieces, mostly in beautiful condition, STEM said. Because of the scarcity of silver coins during the period, they frankly were surprised to find silver coins as well, especially in such fine condition that you can still see the mint luster. Many of the gold coins have a slight dark film that easily rinses away to reveal uncirculated surfaces preserved by years in the deep. To date, more than 750 gold coins have been recovered. Some 60% of them are coronet head, $20 double eagles, and the balance are coronet head $10 eagles. More than 900 silver-seated Liberty half dollars have also been recovered thus far. At the time of the Republic's discovery, estimates made from historical records and comparable coin sales placed the cargo's possible value at $120 to $180 million. So far, there is insufficient information to check the accuracy of those early estimates. Precious coins aren't the only treasure that the Republic has to give up. The wreck site also offers a rare, time capsule glimpse into a turbulent and fascinating period of America's past. While not much of the ship's hull remains, the rudder, parts of the paddle wheels, 
and steam engine are relatively intact. So too are thousands of artifacts that are beginning to emerge in wonderful condition, including the ship's bell and much of its cargo. Carefully documenting and interpreting the site is a priority for the Odyssey Group, which wants to share the ship's story with the public. Technology is boosting the archaeological effort. The precision positioning capability of a new Sonardyne long baseline acoustic system enables the team to create geographically correct photo mosaics of the site at nearly real-time speed. While the early successes are encouraging, the Odyssey team still has months of work ahead on the wreck site. Delving further into the secrets to be found among the ship's cargo will add to both challenge and recovery time. STEM said that they will be excavating some really interesting areas of the site that promise to unveil fascinating glimpses into the cargo and passengers that were aboard the ship. The variety of shapes and sizes make artifact recovery more difficult than that of the coins, but it's well worth the effort. Even at this early stage, the doomed ship's cargo is raising some new questions about its Reconstruction-era mission. Odyssey's website is regularly updated with information from the shipwreck site, and visitors can sign up for email alerts. The Republic is not the only famous shipwreck that we have stumbled upon. Over time, there have been many, and we will be exploring some of them. Notable shipwrecks that were lost and now found. It is estimated that there are more than 3 million shipwrecks in the ocean, while some boats that are neither valuable nor historically significant sink in unremarkable situations and with no loss of life, other wrecks are famous for their devastating death toll and disastrous circumstances. Many shipwrecks have been condemned to lie in Davy Jones's locker forever, slowly becoming home to sea life and eventually disappearing altogether. However, several famous wreckages have since been rediscovered and raised from the seabed and offer us a fascinating insight into the lives of those who sailed them. Even some shipwrecks that remain underwater have been found with troves of priceless treasures and are popular destinations for scuba divers. Now, let us take a look at these shipwrecks and the different circumstances surrounding why they were wrecked, starting with the Endurance ship. Endurance 1915. For over a century, the explorer Sir Ernest Shackleton's ship, Endurance, was lost beneath the ice flows of the Weddell Sea in the Antarctic. The Imperial Transantarctic Expedition, had set out in 1914 to cross the Antarctic continent via the South Pole. However, the Endurance never reached land. It became stuck in sea ice, and in its clutches the ship drifted northward until it was eventually crushed and sunk in 1915, stranding the 28 men of the expedition on the ice. From there they would begin an extraordinary journey home. 107 years later, however, in February 2022, a crew of scientists and archaeologists, as well as filmmakers led by historian Dan Snow, departed Cape Town, South Africa, on board the icebreaker Agulhas II, towards the presumed location of Endurance's sinking. Led by polar geographer Dr. John Shears and marine archaeologist Menson Bound, the Endurance 22 expedition located the wreck at a depth of 3,008 meters, approximately four miles south of the position originally recorded by Captain Worsley. Whilst this shipwreck is old, over 2,029 years old, but it's not the most ancient on this list, Antikythera Shipwreck on 7060 BC. In 1900, sponge divers off the tiny Greek island of Antikythera uncovered an ancient shipwreck on the seabed. Subsequent archaeological investigations revealed that it was a Roman ship that sank between 70 and 60 BC during a voyage to Italy. It took with it a fortune in fine art and treasures, including three corroded pieces of flat bronze, which when reassembled created a device known as the Antikythera Mechanism, which is thought to be the world's first analog computer and has since become one of the world's most treasured archaeological finds. Researchers have described the wreckage as a floating museum, with finds including bronze statues, 36 marble sculptures, statues, a bronze lyre, several pieces of glasswork, coins, jewelry, and even human remains of the crew and passengers. Many of the stunning finds are now on display in the National Archaeological Museum in Athens. This wreckage helped enlighten us about the ways of life of the ancient Greeks and their arts, which leads us to our next shipwreck, the Mary Rose 1545. 
The Mary Rose was one of the most speedy and heavily armed warships in the English fleet. It sank in 1545 while it was leading the attack on a French invasion fleet in Portsmouth Harbor. It has been debated why it sank. Most theorize that it was overloaded with soldiers, guns, and ammunition. Of the 400 crew and soldiers on board, fewer than 40 people escaped since the ship quickly filled with seawater and sank. The wreckage was rediscovered in 1971 by a team of divers. Over the following 10 years, it was excavated by more than 500 volunteer divers, and in 1982, it was brought to the surface. In 1986, around a third of the original hull went on display at the Mary Rose Museum. Extraordinary finds included more than 28,000 artifacts such as hand weapons, tools, cannons and armor, and personal items such as coins, clothing and letters from home, which detail life during the English Tudor era. Human remains in the wreck indicate that many had experienced childhood malnutrition, while crew members showed signs of arthritis and bone fractures. This shipwreck displays the dynamics of war and its devastating consequences, a theme that is prominent in many shipwrecks. Vasa 1628. When it was launched in 1628, Vasa was one of the most powerful warships in the world and was the jewel of the Swedish Navy. However, upon its maiden voyage, it had barely traveled one mile before it was struck by wind, rolled over, and sank in front of the crowds on shore that had gathered to cheer its departure. The wreck of the mighty Vasa was rediscovered in Stockholm Harbor in the 1950s and was eventually removed to a dry dock after extensive work and preparation. Since 1990, the wreck has been on display in Stockholm. Remarkably, much of its hull and detailed woodwork is still intact after centuries of submersion, probably due to the harbor's polluted water preventing wood-eating microorganisms from surviving. More than a dozen people and thousands of artifacts have also been recovered from the wreck, including hand weapons, ship tools, cannons, sails, and personal items such as clothes, shoes, and coins. Nature can be a very terrible opponent, and not many ships can say they won against it. Queen Anne's Revenge, 1718 The Queen Anne's Revenge was a former French slave carrier that was then captured and commanded by the feared English pirate Blackbeard. Blackbeard and his crew used it to plunder Dutch, British, and Portuguese ships on their way to the Caribbean. However, it ran aground in North Carolina in 1718. Blackbeard escaped on a smaller ship along with most of the treasure, leaving the ship to be wrecked and sunk. In 1996, the ship's wreckage was rediscovered lying in around 28 fought of water around a mile offshore. Over 300,000 artifacts have since been recovered from the wreck which offers a tantalizing insight into the life of a pirate in the early 18th century. In addition, many cannons have been found, far more than normal for a ship of its size, from a variety of European foundries, reflecting the diversity of cannons that had been seized and plundered during the colonial era. Several were still loaded. Artifacts also include medical supplies and instruments, which backs up the theory that Blackbeard used the latest medical technology to try and keep his crew ready for battle at all times. Pirates played a key role in countries increasing the defense of their ships, as pirates once constituted a menace to the high seas. HMS Victory 1744 The 100-gun HMS Victory was launched in 1737. It was while on a mission to relieve a British convoy trapped by a French blockade in Portugal that it was separated from the fleet and sank probably due to a combination of stormy weather, a top-heavy design, and rotten timbers. All 1,050 crew members were killed. In 2008, the wreck was discovered in a location further away than archaeologists and historians had predicted. The discovery of a larger gun which was only carried on a prime vessel of HMS Victory size allowed archaeologists to definitively identify the wreck as well as the cannon, rigging, glass bottle fragments, parts of the hull, and anchors were also unearthed. It has long been rumored that a large gold hoard was on the ship when it sank. However, it has never been found, and its existence is debated by historians. Since it is a military wreck, the British government owns the remains of the HMS Victory. Despite the British claiming the wreck, there are still individuals out there who believe they can lay hands on the large gold hoard. The Sultana, 1865 The explosion and sinking of the steamboat, the Sultana, 
marks the worst maritime disaster in the history of the U.S. The ship was chiefly used for the lower Mississippi cotton trade, but was increasingly used at the end of the American Civil War to transport prisoners of war from the Union Army back home. Though it was designed to have a capacity of 376 passengers, the Sultana was carrying a staggering 2,137 people when three of the boat's boilers exploded and caused her to sink near Memphis, Tennessee. The death toll is uncertain, but estimates have ranged from anything from 1 to 100 to 1 800 people. Despite the disaster, it was overshadowed in the press by events about the end of the Civil War and the killing of Abraham Lincoln's assassin. As a result, nobody was ever held accountable. In 1982, blackened pieces from the wreck of the ship were discovered in a soybean field around six kilometers from Memphis, which is likely where the Mississippi River used to flow through. A temporary Sultana Disaster Museum was opened in 2015 on the 150th anniversary of the tragedy, featuring relics discovered amongst the wreckage. The display of the wreck stands to remind us of these painful events to help us never forget history. RMS Titanic 1912 The Titanic is undoubtedly one of the most famous and luxurious ships of all time. When it was built in the early 20th century, it cost an equivalent of $180 million today and was considered to be unsinkable. However, after striking an iceberg, the ship took on a massive amount of water and began to sink quickly. A combination of a lack of emergency protocol and a tiny number of lifeboats led to 1,017 people losing their lives. In 1985, the wreckage was discovered 13,000 feet underwater and nearly 4 kilometers off the coast of Newfoundland. Several treasures were recovered from the cargo hold of the first-class passengers, along with other fascinating artifacts. Though some companies have proposed plans to raise the ship to the surface, the wreckage is incredibly fragile because it is being destroyed by iron-eating bacteria. Scientists suggest that within the next 100 years, the wreckage will have all but disappeared. Today, the wreckage is protected under the UNESCO Convention. The Titanic is perhaps the most iconic shipwreck in history. To this day remains a site that people are willing to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to see. MV Dona Paz, 1987. The sinking of the MV Dona Paz is the deadliest peacetime maritime disaster in history and is remembered as Asia's Titanic. A Japanese-built and Philippine-registered ferry, it was launched in 1963 and had a capacity of 608 people. However, it was severely overcrowded, with some 2,000 passengers on board who were not listed on the manifest. On December 20, 1987, it collided with the oil tanker MT Vector, which caused a huge fire and explosion that claimed the lives of 4,186 people. Only 25 people survived, having been picked up by a nearby ship. It took eight hours before Filipino authorities learned of the accident and another eight hours to begin search and rescue operations. It was claimed that the ship didn't have a radio and the life jackets were locked away. Blame was also pointed at MT Vector, which was later discovered to be unseaworthy, operating without a license and looking for a qualified master. The wreck lies 500 meters beneath the sea and is in good condition. SS Edmund Fitzgerald The majestic SS Edmund Fitzgerald was an American freighter. The ship was launched on 7 June 1958 and was the biggest vessel to ply on the Great Lakes of North America at that time. It carried a cargo of taconite iron ore from mines near Minnesota to the ironworks in Ohio, Michigan, and Detroit. She was a famous ship that broke its previous records and set new ones in its 17 years of service. She embarked on her last unfortunate voyage from Wisconsin near Duluth on 9 November 1975. She was carrying a cargo of ore pellets and was headed by Captain Ernest M. McSorley. The ship was destined for a steel factory in Detroit and was moving when she was joined by another ship, SS. Arthur M. Anderson The next day, both ships were caught in a strong storm with hurricane winds and almost 11 mile high waves. On the evening of 10 November 1975, Edmund Fitzgerald sank around 17 miles north-northwest of Whitefish Point, Michigan. The entire 29-member crew went down with it in what has become the greatest Great Lakes shipping tragedy of all time. This stands to remind us that nature, whilst beautiful, can also be terrible, and we shouldn't mess with it.
HMHS Britannic. Belonging to the Olympic class of steamships, the White Star Line vessel was the youngest sister ship of the RMS Olympic and the RMS Titanic. It was constructed to be a passenger liner. However, she functioned as a hospital ship from 1915 until she finally sank in November 1916. She entered service before the First World War started. She was carefully designed, and lessons learned from the sinking of the Titanic were implemented in its construction to make it safe and comfortable. In 1915-16, she sailed between Britain and the Dardanelles. On 21st November 1916, she was shaken by a blast that occurred due to a naval mine of the German Navy. The incident took place near the Greek island of Kea in the Aegean Sea. The ship sank around an hour later and killed 30 people. She became the biggest ship that sank during World War I and more so, tragically. Of the 1066 people, 1036 survived and were rescued from the water and the lifeboats. In 1975, its wreck was located and it became the world's biggest and most well-preserved passenger liner. This wreck, unlike all others, tells a tale of death and survival, the brutal realities of war. HMS Curacoa HMS Curacoa was a light cruiser constructed for the Royal Navy. She functioned as a flagship most of the time. Assigned to the Atlantic Fleet in 1919, she was sent to the Baltic to support the British forces in their campaign during the Civil War in Russia. After encountering a naval mine, she suffered damage and was sent to be repaired. Later, she was shifted to the Mediterranean Fleet in 1922-23 to support British troops in Turkey. She was converted to a training ship in 1933, and in 1939, before the Second World War started, she was made into an anti-aircraft cruiser. After 1940, she became an escort ship. In 1942, she escorted the RMS Queen Mary, which resulted in the tragedy. The former was carrying around 15,000 U.S. troops and was moving in a zigzag course to avoid German bombers and possible enemy vessels. Queen May caught up with the escort ship Curacoa and was trying to overtake her. One of the seamen of Curacoa, Ernest Watson, was admiring Queen Mary when he noticed its bow swinging toward the cruiser. He realized that the two ships were soon going to collide. The 20 times bigger Queen Mary rammed into Curacoa's metal plating and sliced it in half before it sank in no time. Out of 430 men on board, only 99 seamen and two officers survived. The sad realities of war are a constant amongst the shipwrecks. War is not to be desired in any form. The Fleet of Kublai Khan Kublai Khan's lost fleet is one of the most famous shipwrecks of old times. Two Mongolian invasion fleets attempting to attack Japan were wrecked in storms in 1274 and 1281, killing tens of thousands of troops. Several artifacts belonging to these vessels were found centuries later on the seabed of the Amari Gulf. In October 2001, an entire shipwreck claimed to originate from Fujian in South China was discovered by archaeologists. Recently in 2015, archaeologists located a Mongolian ship in a bay close to the city of Matsura, near the island of Kyushu. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe to our channel and check out another of our interesting videos.